Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday. This week we're going to be looking at detox diets. Um, so basically the idea that over the course of time our bodies accumulate toxins uh, which cause us to become fat or otherwise unhealthy. Uh, so every now and then it's a good idea to run some sort of detoxification diet to help flush these toxins out. Now I'll just say from the outset that I'm not personally a huge fan of detox diets. And what I'd like to do here is quickly go through one of my favorite science-based medicine articles on this topic, which is one of my favorite resources for general skeptic and science-based information. And then we'll take a quick look at whether there's any hint of truth to any of this based on the most recent peer-reviewed scientific literature. Um, okay, so here's the article. Uh, it was written by Dr. Stephen Novella, who is a clinical neurologist at Yale University School of Medicine. Uh, so first he links to a 2016 case report from the British Medical Journal, which tells the story of a 47-year-old woman who showed up to the hospital having seizures due to euvolemic hyponatremia secondary to polydipsia. Now, so basically her detox plan had her drinking a ton of water, which according to Dr. Novella can sometimes be as high as 60 liters, which is insane. Uh, but anyway, if you drink more water than you need, uh, you run the risk of developing hyponatremia, which is basically just a very low level of sodium in the blood. Um, so Dr. Novella explains how this happens. Uh, if you drink too much water, you can overwhelm your kidneys and get hyponatremia, which can then result in delirium, seizures, and brain damage if you try to correct the low sodium too quickly. Um, so the sort of detox that has you drinking way more water than you feel like you need uh, is actually quite dangerous and totally unnecessary uh, because pretty much all healthy adults can simply use thirst as a guide for hydration and drinking more water than you need to satisfy your thirst won't do anything extra for your health or fat loss. Now in a linked article here from pharmacist Scott Gavura, uh, there are three solid strikes against detox diets that I'd like to quickly highlight. Uh, the first pretty much says that no detox advocate really ever says what these toxins actually are. Um, so depending on who you ask, you may hear some combination of food additives, salt, meat, fluoride, prescription drugs, etc. Uh, but the culprit is always non-specific. So detox diets never name the actual toxins that they remove because they've never been shown to remove any toxins. Now, if there was a specific claim about a specific toxin that the detox diet was supposed to remove, then that's something that we could investigate with an actual scientific study. Uh, but since the claims are always so nonspecific, it allows these detox plans to stay outside the purview of actual science while still sounding somewhat sciencey to the general public. Now, the second strike here kind of says two things. Uh, so first, the idea that chemicals aren't bad by default because everything is made up of chemicals. Air is chemicals, food is chemicals. Well, I guess food and air are made up of chemicals. Um, drugs are chemicals and, and so forth. And then secondly, the idea that when it comes to things that are actually harmful, our bodies have already evolved a very complex and effective system of defenses for their removal. Um, so the skin, kidneys, lymphatic system, GI system, and the liver already make up an astoundingly complex and sophisticated detoxification system. And also the idea that the liver and kidneys act like filters, where toxins are sort of held until they're cleaned out, just isn't accurate physiologically. Now the liver converts toxic substances into other substances, which are then eliminated in bile or urine. Um, so these systems are self-cleansing and don't seem to need any help from detox diets. Now the third and final strike against the detox diet comes from a pretty cool paper. It was published in the Journal of Human Nutrition and Dietetics and looked at a bunch of popular commercial detox diets, including Dr. Oz's Weekend Cleanse and the Lemon Detox Diet. And pulling all of it together, they basically concluded that at present, there's no compelling evidence to support the use of detox diets for weight management or toxin elimination. And that given the costs and health risks, they should be discouraged by health professionals. Now, all that isn't to say there aren't certain chemicals to be worried about. Now, things like persistent organic pollution Pollutants, or POPs, are industry chemicals that can accumulate in adipose tissue because they're highly lipophilic. 
or fat loving, and then can take years to break down. Uh, but these things also tend to be very highly regulated. Uh, the European Union, USA, and Australia have been steadily banning POPs since the 70s. And also certain heavy metals like arsenic and mercury can be toxic to humans at low doses, uh, but these are also generally heavily regulated in developed countries. So for example, in the case of mercury, most people have detectable levels, although these levels are generally not sufficiently high enough to cause adverse health effects. And as a result, it seems unlikely that the average person would benefit greatly from metal detoxification. Now, what I personally found to be the most interesting in all of this was how some new research might actually help inform us on how to make a sort of science-based detox diet in the future. So according to this paper, if anything should qualify as a candidate for actually benefiting from a dietary detox, it would be either POPs, so persistent organic pollutants, which have been used in pesticides and electrical equipment in the past, but have been banned since the 70s, or heavy metals like lead and mercury, because unlike nearly everything else, these compounds are actually not easily filtered out by the liver and kidneys, and like I said, can accumulate in fat tissue over time. They instead said that, Although there is currently no evidence to support the use of commercial detox diets for removing toxic substances, there may be certain nutritional components that possess detoxification properties. And then they laid those components out in this table here. So this is where it actually starts to get a bit complicated. And I think it's worth mentioning that most of these things have only been tested in animals. Uh, but just looking here at citrus pectin, for example, now this is interesting because this is a substance you can find in the peel of citrus fruits, and it's a natural chelating agent which means it might be helpful for eliminating heavy metals like lead. And then I found this part really interesting, uh, the classic fat substitute Olestra, uh, which I've actually tried in fat-free potato chips in the States uh, because it's banned here in Canada, may in fact be able to absorb PCBs and eliminate them in the feces. Uh, but remember, even though PCB contaminated equipment still exists, they were banned from production in the 70s. And I don't think we should get our hopes up for Alestra as a detox diet ingredient uh, since it has its own string of health concerns. And like I said, it's banned here in Canada and in the EU. Um, so again, while this is all very interesting, and may point toward a subject for future research. I think there are still a ton of gaps to be filled in here before we're ready for a true toxin elimination plan that's actually based on legitimate scientific evidence. Now, I think the authors of this paper also nailed it when it comes to detox diets and weight loss, although it is plausible that energy-restricted detox diets are able to produce short-term weight loss, it's unclear whether they're useful for maintaining a healthy weight in the long term. And there's a vast range of alternative diets that contain adequate protein and micronutrient levels at the same time as facilitating weight loss, which begs the question of whether detox diets have any utility at all. Um, so bringing this full circle, I would say that detox diets have proven to be harmful and dangerous in multiple case reports. And although there may be some future promise in a few specific food compounds that may selectively target specific toxins, um, no robust scientific evidence has shown any popular detox diets to actually be effective at doing this. And when it comes to weight loss, I think you'd be much better off just focusing on a more sustainable approach. Um, so try to pick a diet that you can actually stick to over the long term, and ideally try to find one that includes a variety of nutrient-rich foods with a special attention to more moderate caloric deficit that's sustained over time and adequate protein intake. And with all that said, I would say the idea that detox diets actually work is busted. Uh, they not only lack scientific backing, but could also cause serious harm. Um, so I think that as of now, the best advice is to simply avoid them altogether. Um, so guys, as usual, I'll have all of the sources and recommended reading linked in the description box below. And before we go, I wanna give a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring another Myth Bust Monday video. Um, since launching my new push-pull legs and women's specialization programs last week, I've been using Squarespace every day to update my products and check my analytics. And it's actually been the most simple uh, process for me to do, uh, especially when it comes to running the online store component. Um, so Squarespace definitely comes highly recommended. And I've actually been using Squarespace for the last, I think going on four years now, and they have tons of beautiful designer custom templates available and great 24 hour customer support, uh, which I always find to be really helpful. Um, so if you guys wanna get started with making your own website or running your own online store, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash nippered, and that will save you 10% off your first purchase. 
delicious. Um, so thank you Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I've got a new training vlog on the way next Monday. Um, so I'll see you guys all here then.